Greetings, everyone! Welcome back to some more Let's Play Underrail with me, your host, Tim. In the last episode, we cleaned out Port Crag of all the pirates. Yeah! Eliminated them all, looted all the bodies, sold a bunch of stuff, and we are now back here in Core City. I visited a bunch of different places in order to sell some of that gear, and some of the gear I still have lying around here that needs to be sold off, and we are up to 22,000 327 Stygian coins again. That is amazing. We can actually purchase the torpedo if I wanted to and have a tiny bit of money left over. Still have some SGS credits and we're getting up there with the United Stations dollars too. In any case, when I came back here, I decided to spend a little more time looking into crafting leather armors. And we're going to talk about it for a little bit. I want to show you the crafting leather armors and some of the dilemma I am currently being presented with, with dilemmas, because of all the options and choices that I have when it comes to this sort of thing. If you're not interested in listening to me talk about crafting leather armor, go down to the comment section. I will have a comment down there from me, pinned on YouTube. On BitChute, it'll just be there. With a timestamp, you can click on, or on BitChute, move the slider to slider 2, to allow you to skip ahead to where we don't talk about this anymore, because this will take maybe like about 10 to 11 minutes or so. All right, let's get started. So as you know, I have been working on leveling our tailoring. And sitting here in this room, my tailoring is at 100, which is nice. We're gonna, we need it higher. And in particular, I would like it to be roughly the same rank as mechanics. So we're gonna end up dumping 30 more points into tailoring at least to get the skill up to 143 while we're standing in this room. Now, this is because of how important it is to have good leather armor qualities and the high ranks you need to actually work with leather armors. Leathers, in particular, from all these creatures that we see, have, as you can tell, their quality. And we've talked about qualities for crossbows and what have you for a little bit already. So we know that the higher the quality of a item, the more skill you require to work with it, and the more benefits it will grant you for having it. So for example, if we take this quality 68 Ancient Righthound Leather, and we put it here, we can see that this would give us a mechanical of 26% with 9 damage re uh, reduction, 22% or 7, depending upon which is more, and an armor penalty of 20%. And you can see the durability here as well, which is another hint as to the level of the item. This would be considered a low-level suit of armor. With this one, as you can see, the points increase slightly. We go from 22 and 9 to 28 and 11. And this was, I think, 22 and 7, and now it's 22 and 8. And the durability is also higher, because it's considered to be a higher level item. Also, note that the tailoring required to work with it is higher, of course. 54 tailoring for the lower suit of armor, versus 64 for the higher suit of armor. And that's obvious when you hover over these as well. Now, it is extraordinarily difficult, if not impossible, to find any leathers which are of a fantastical quality higher than, let's say, 90. You'd be hard-pressed to find something as good as this Greater Siphoner leather out there in the world. It is not easy to do. You have to kill quite a few Siphoners, Rat Hounds or Ancient Rat Hounds, or in some cases, I guess, pigs or what have you. I tend to find things that are roughly 60, uh, 70 or below by killing creatures. This is, in fact, one of the few pieces of armor that I have ever, uh, leather armor that I've ever seen, which is actually of super high quality, naturally. This is because leather can be, can, leather's quality can be increased by infusing it with super steel fibers. These things over here that I have three of. How do you get super steel fibers before we go and show you what they do? Over here at Foundry, the place where you take your super steel, I'm sorry, where you spend 3,000 charons to get super steel plates, is Leone. You will take the super steel that you earned and place it in this box. You can then talk to her, and you can say that you have super steel that needs shaping. 
she'll charge you 100 Charons to create either Super Steel Fiber or Super Steel Sheets. I don't know what Super Steel Sheets are used in. I suspect it is used in the creation of metal armors, but I am not sure. In any case, you give her the money, and she takes that Super Steel that you dropped off, and she will convert it into a fiber of equal quality, requiring a similar tailoring skill as to what it used to require for your mechanics. That's right, uh, uh, yes, that's right. So this was a quality 160 Super Steel plate. It is now a quality 160 Super Steel fiber. It required mechanics 128. This requires tailoring 128. Note as well that you must have some mechanics to work with the Super Steel Fiber. If you go pure tailoring, you will not be able to use Super Steel Fiber in your leather armor crafts, at least. Next. Why is that, why is that important to know? Well, let's show you what infused leather armor can, uh, what infusing the super steel fibers can do for your leather armor. And before we continue, you have to purchase the infused leather armor blueprint from Leone, the girl that we saw over in Foundry in order to do this. Infused leather takes a leather and a set of super steel fibers. Let's actually re-grab this out again and the way it works is that you put your leather here and then you put a, a set of super steel fibers and the quality will be increased by some percentage of them I am not sure about the math but as we can see what this will do is it will turn our ancient rat hound leather from quality 68 and it'll make it an infused Ancient Ratthound Leather of quality 95. To my knowledge, the infused part doesn't do... I don't think it does anything special. Let's go ahead and infuse it. And let's go back now to our leather armor again. We can see this is 11 and 8. And the infused... Oh, it does make it a little better. It does make it a little better is now 30 and 12, 24 and 8, and it has this extra property. All heat damage reduced by 10%, all cold damage reduced by 10%. You cannot infuse the armor a second time. To my knowledge, at least. Correct. Yep, you cannot infuse it a second time, only once. Now, let's go back to this again. Let's go and take this out. When it comes to leather armors as well and infusing them, you'll note that... Infusing them, Tim. Our 68 will be converted to quality 95. And our 81 is 101. That was 68 and that was 81. Notice that the difference is only 6. Despite the fact that there is 13 points of quality difference between the two. The higher the quality of the leather armor, I believe the less... Or, or the, there begins to be this point of diminishing returns for it. It's still worth it. It's still worth it. You, all, you almost always want to change the highest quality armor you have to even better higher quality. Because you want the best you can. But you get more of a bonus, a, a bigger percentage jump for the lower quality armors being increased. I hope that makes sense. Next, the same thing happens, by the way, with different types of quality Super Steel Fibers. This was a 77, which increased our 81 Ancient Rat Hound to 101. If we use our 109, this jumps to 119 for our 81, and for our 68, 114. Now it's five different not four, not six. So keep that in mind as well. And as for the last one, that one quality 148, we get 129 on this ancient rat hound. And this one is 128. 
Wait, no, I'm sorry. That is a mutant dog. That's a mutated dog ladder. We don't want that. This one. 129 for our 68. And our 81 is 132, so only four points difference now between them. So again, there is, a there is diminishing returns for all of it. It is my belief that if you had like a quality 110, probably right hand leather armor normally, and you infused it, you probably would not see, it probably wouldn't be worth farming up that quality, spending the hundreds of hours it would take killing rat hounds over and over again to try to get it to drop. Just get something that's, you know, the best you can and work with it. You won't be too disappointed by losing a few points, but it still is important to get it as high quality as you possibly can. Now, I unfortunately cannot show you the final stats for this because I do not have a tailoring of 118 at this moment. And I do not plan on making any of these armors until I have that quality. Next, let's go ahead and now show you what benefits you have for all the different types of leather armors when you make leather armor out of them. So we've seen that Ancient Rat Hound, oops, leather armor, Tim. Ancient Rat Hound will give us some mechanical a reduction, a good amount of it actually, that's 11, that's pretty damn good, and 28% with cold resistance as well. But our armor penalty is 20%. This is not acceptable for me as a stealth, as a stealther, because I need that armor penalty to be 0%. If it's at 0, I gain a bonus to my dodge and evasion because of the nimble feat. So this will not do, unfortunately. However, we can see the bonuses that that grants us. Our pig leather armor grants us some mechanical and increases our constitution by one. We'll also check and see what all these do when we infuse them as well, everyone. Our siphoner gives us mechanical, heat, and acid resistance with almost no armor penalty and increases our dodge and evasion. The greater siphoner gives you mechanical heat and acid and energy and also increases your dodge and evasion rating. The Heartbreaker Serpent Leather Armor I picked up increases our mechanical and our bio resistance. Notice, and it also it gives us mechanical damage resistance and threshold increased by 25% against melee attacks. So melee attacks will do less damage to us. But the armor penalty here is 30. It does increase our persuasion and dodge, but also decreases our stealth and evasion. Um, dodge is your melee ability to avoid an attack. Evasion is your ranged. Me uh, melee, basically, this is like wearing a, this, um, a, what is it called? Displacer beast, I think, cloak. So you're not quite where you, the enemy thinks you are. But evasion, this thing glows, and they can absolutely tell where you're located. Now, I should probably stop and talk. Uh, well, actually, no. Let's go ahead and do some infusion, and we'll take a look and see what they do together. So, oh, well, I won't be able to infuse, unfortunately, the Heartbreaker, because I have no biology. I was not intending on taking biology, either. The only reason I would take it would be for this armor, and at 30% armor penalty, that's too high for me. I will not take it. So let's go ahead and make some greater infu uh, infused greater siphoner leather. It's not gonna work, Tim. We'll go back here to our leather armor again. And let's see what our greater does for us. Our pig armor now increases our constitution by one and also increases our health by 71. That is very nice, actually. Of course, I would want a much higher pig quality, since this is just mechanical uh, 7 and 32, but the armor penalty being 15 means it's quite wearable. I would consider this to be a mid-level suit of armor. So we would want to purchase or find pig quality leather hmm, roughly probably around the level 81 normally, probably higher than that. And as for our siphoner leather, look how amazing this is. 8 mechanical. 9 Heat, 7 Acid, 7 Energy, plus these percentages. Armor penalty only 5%, and our Dodge and Evasion are increased by 56. 
That is amazing. About another five minutes, everyone, and then I'll be done exp uh, showing you everything there is to know about crafting with leather. I spent a lot of time in the original game trying to understand how all this works, and now I have a pretty... I have a good enough knowledge I can probably at least show you guys a bunch of different stuff. How about that mutated dog leather that we found a long time ago back there in, uh, in Junkyard? We'll try that one, and we'll try the normal siphoner. For our mutated dog leather, we get decent mechanical at 25 and 8. You gain a large amount of acid resistance, 41% and 12, with an armor penalty of only 10%. All healing effects are increased by 38%. I didn't realize that was an effect. That's pretty amazing, actually. So our health hypos, our bandages, the, um, uh, the honey that we eat, all increased by 38%. We lose some persuasion. We gain some intimidation. And finally, this normal siphoner is the same thing as the greater siphoner. Only no energy resistance. It's mechanical, heat, and acid. Actually, these look like these are higher numbers. Heat 26 and 10, acid 26 and 10. I think the other ones were just 7, weren't they? And what was the other effect? I believe it was still like 56 or so. Oh, dodge and evasion by 15. I might have used the raw, um, the other fiber in the greater siphoner. Yeah, I, I did. I did. So if I was to look at this one now... Yeah, 51 and 51. I think it was 53 and 53 with the greater siphoner, but I would expect that, given that it is a higher of a higher quality normally than our normal siphoner leather was. Right. So, that is not all you can do, by the way, with leathers. You've seen two empty slots down here for our leather armors. That is for padding, plates, or... Uh... Padding plates or cloth. I do not have every single type of padding with me, though I think I have every single type of cloth currently. Every time you add one something to this, the overall tailoring requirement will be increased by 10% of whatever the bait of whatever the highest thing is. So to craft using this black cloth, which is the highest black cloth I have, now requires this leather armor to have a 121 tailoring total. But, it has also increased our stealth by 39 points. This effect will be the same no matter the type of armor that I put in here. That is stealth 39 no matter what, because it is based on the cloth, the black cloth, I am attempting to make the armor out of. Padding is also... Oh, I thought this was also metal plates. Apparently not. So it's just it's just padding, and I have two types of paddings. Soft foam and insulating foam. The insulating foam adds cold resistance to it and will become immune to freezing. It also adds 3% to our armor penalty in this case, but this would be a really nice suit of armor. 7 mechanical, 26%. That's can be better than our current armor. We lose all electrical defenses. We gain heat, cold, and acid resistance. We gain dodge, evasion, stealth, and we cannot be frozen. How awesome is that? But, it requires a tailing of 132, which we're not going to have until we dump at least like 25 more points into Taylor. How about the other things? Let's, uh, let's show you those too. Kelvar Cloth is amazing. It reduces the damage threshold against bullets and shotgun shells. It also increases your armor penalty by 10%. 10%. Making this up to 15% total. It's a bit of a weird number. The armor we currently have is 200%. But I think that's because the... This was made of a... Of a... Ballistic panel. Which we can't get, I think, for leather armor. 
This would be the best we can do if we wanted something similar to the armor we have currently. So we would take more damage from bullets. And of course that's cloth, so we couldn't put in our stealth increasing black cloth. We'd have to use something like the soft foam padding to give us a little bonus to stealth if we wanted it. There was another type of foam padding, but I do not have it with me at the moment, so I cannot show you what it does. The final piece of cloth increases your armor penalty by 15%, but it decreases the damage taken from explosions by 75%. Very nice. So, those are the options for leather armor, everyone. But that's not all you can use these leather armors for. You also have boots. We are wearing these nin ninja tabby boots. And we can make other tabby boots as well. You need two soles to do it. And then you place some sort of material, cloth or leather. Our current boots are made of cloth, black cloth. As you can see, with this black cloth, which I do not have the tailoring to actually make, because it requires 110, we would gain as, well, you can see the differences over there. We can make a much better, well, not a, maybe not a much better, but a better uh, pair of boots. For, uh, boots. Oh, yeah, yeah, these are boots. A better pair of boots for us. Instead of leather, we could also, well, actually, we could use, like, Kelver cloth. If we wanted our mechanical damage threshold increase like, by 200% against bullet and shotgun shells. I wonder if the if this applies to all damage you take. Because that would make it really tempting to actually make a set of tabby boots on Kelver cloth. We would use we would lose 28 we, we would lose that stealth, but we'd pick up damage resistance against bullets just for wearing these boots. That'd be kind of I have to look that up. I actually don't know if that's the case. Now, cloth has the penalty of your chance to be crit increasing by three percent. All the cloths will do that to you. All of them. Yep. As you can see as well, the damage taken from explosions is reduced by thirty-four percent, not uh, seventy-five percent. Still, it's it's good. It's still good. In any case, cloth is three percent penalty. Leather is 1.5 penalty. All the leathers also, I think, grant you another secondary effect. I think if they're infused. I don't know if they do it when they're not infused. No, okay, so if you infuse them, you will gain another special effect. Our infused siphoner leather tabby boots does things most tabby boots do, which is it increases our movement points, increases our movement speed. You can see that it increases our dodge and evasion even more than the cloth does because this is siphoner leather. It also reduces the action point of melee attacks by one, and because the siphoner leather tab, because this is infused siphoner, we are immune to being slowed. I don't know what that means. I think that means that like caltrops, I don't think it can slow us. I don't think we lose movement points. But I'm not 100% sure on that, having not made myself a pair of those before. Mutated dog leather, if infused, will let you walk on acid without taking any damage. You effectively have half of the uh, shore step feet with them. Greater siphoner leather works the same as siphoner leather. I don't remember what ancient rat hound and pig do, so let's go ahead and take a peek at that now. We go back down towards heavy boots. Action point cost reduced by one. I think this this must this must be it. All mechanical damage taken reduced by five percent. Is that is that what's what the special is? Oh, no! Uh, it's the same. Dodge evasion, movement points, movement points. Persuasion reduced. Oh, maybe I, maybe, maybe I am completely wrong. Cold, 7%. Oh, nope, there is, there is a benefit. Heat. Heat 2 is what the infused Ancient Rat Hound Leather grants you. As opposed to a secondary effect, like Moon Moon Immune to Slows, it's granting us even better. Even better cold and heat resistances. 
Oh, and there's no armor penalty for these either. Now, that is, we are, we are not quite done yet either. In addition to tabby boots, we have normal boots that we could make instead. And padding. So these normal boots, as you can see, are, are not tabby. So we do not get increased critical chance, but we also do not get the movement point bonuses. In the case of the insulated infused ancient rat hound leather boots, my god, that's a mouthful, we pick up mechanical and cold resistances. Mechanical damage used by 5%, critical damage bonus of unarmed and fist weapons increased by 20%. Wow, that's nice. Persuasion decreased by 10, and a 5% armor penalty for, the, for this pair. If I was to take out the, that padding and put in this one, our cold damage changes slightly, but we pick up a tiny bit of stealth. We could also add, looks like some metal plates to this of some sort. I don't think I have anything that would fit in that though. Like I don't think those are able to go in two normal boots. Oh, they can, hold on a second then. Let's, let's take a look and see what this does for us. So if I was to add the Super Steel Plates... Oh! Look at that! Our penalty jumps up to 12%. We pick up... 8% Mechanical. One more Mechanical point of damage. No, nope, just 8% Mechanical. 4% Heat. 8% Energy as well. Okay, and how about the Tungsten and Steel? More of an armor penalty, less resistances, but also significantly less expensive to produce because we can you can buy this and this we had to purchase with three thousand charons. So I I think you guys got the idea, and I am struggling. I am struggling with what type of boots to create. So what I did is I just made ourselves a pair of Ninja Tabby boots with some decent quality cloth, but not as good as the other cloth I have waiting for us. So, these boots are an upgrade in every way for the ones we currently have. And, when we level again, know that I will be agonizing over what type of leather armor to make. And I will be spending more time off screen in an attempt to find even higher quality leathers because we will want them. I do think though that we will not create Heartbreaker Serpent Skin nor Ancient Rathound Leather because I want absolutely no armor penalty when I'm walking around. I want as much dodge and evasion as I can possibly gain. All right. So if you clicked the numbers down below, actually let me, um, just really quick, there we go. So if you click the numbers down below, welcome back everyone, that took, I don't know how long that took, I think it, it felt like close to 18 minutes, I'm so sorry. But I told everyone else about how the leather armor crafting works, how much I, I really enjoy making leather armors. I, I love the, going out skinning the creatures, Bring the leather, or, or I used to, bring the leather back and then infusing it and then making a fantastic suit of leather armor for us. It, the suits also help you out so much. We don't need as much for, say, agility to increase our dodge and evasion because the leather armor will do that for us. It'll help us in every way. So, and I'm thinking we probably want the greater siphoner leather armor and for boots, Probably siphoner tabby boots will be what we what we make. Anyway, um, right, let's get back over there. So, and thank you again for everyone for being so patient. Also, this video, me recording this part, means I am now ten videos ahead of where my upload schedule is. I think I just uploaded part eighty, and I think this is part ninety or ninety-one. 
So I probably need to stop recording so I can catch up to where my recordings are. It's also going to be a bit agonizing for me because September is coming up. The, during the months of September through November, I really like recording scary games for my channel. Halloween themed uh, games. And I intend to do that again, but that means one of the video series I'm recording, or multiple of them, have to be slowed down while I do that. Ready to go back? Let's go back to camp. He nods. Currently, I'm also super addicted to this game. I love... I love this mod. This mod. I love this DLC so much. I love it! It's fantastic! Alright, so... I picked up more food, speaking of which we should probably eat some of it. We'll leave the leftover supplies here, and then out we go. I'm going to need to... Probably look to purchase some upgraded equipment for our... Jet ski soonish as well. I do not need 19 of these. I don't need. I didn't end up selling this. I don't need that either. I think once these Molotovs are out, I will stop making normal Molotovs. And we will just use magnesium grenades now that I'm aware of how to create them. For our other weapons... I'm looking at all my bolts. Do you guys sell any normal... Metal? Oh! They seem to be having another conference discussion. I'm unaware of your presence. Uh, so... Yes? Uh... Nothing. He nods again. Let him in scratches his head. Man, my hair's growing real fast. Hmm... He passes his hand over his. Uh... There are some big holes in the tent. He looks around and his eyes fall on you. Uh, Garrett! <laughs> As he don't know what to talk about right now. What do you need? What happened to the traitor? He's in custody. We're still interrogating him. Where do you keep him? We can the pipe worker. He glances at Lano Men. We got an empty shipping container. It's the best place to keep him right now. It's secure, and he's out of the way. <laughs> I can the toilet. Damn it, Garrett! Right now I'm imagining a fat guy squatting over a bucket because of you. I don't know. He got something. What if he starts hitting his head against the wall? I saw the sec troops pad the walls with some mattress and stuff. He's shackled in there, I think. Can he still make a lot of noise? Yeah, then he got a hardcore beaten and stopped, rod worker. What's gonna happen to him after all this? He's either gonna get shot or turn to core city authorities when we return. The chief has yet to decide. That's fine with me. He was setting up uh, this whole place to be ambushed. I have no desire to free him. And you have no metal. And you have no metal either. Okay. It occurs to me that I am beginning to run low on special bolts. We fired, I think, almost every single one of our... Um, what should I call it? Poison bolts. We'll take the MK3 shock bolts. We'll still start with our MK2s, though. Alright! Where are we going? Let's check the journal. Okay, I don't see anything new there. Oh! Do we have a, a higher quality... power core? Not there. Let's check our other thing. We should plug it into the Naga Protector. Oh, I should also... I think, charge... The Haxor. Come 
on down here. Stealth. And... I don't think, Tim, you have... Oh, we do. This one's decent. 109. Let's take that one. Oh, 110. Steven... Oh, we'll take the 109 one. Statue. The damaged Naga Protector lies dormant. There are two access panels on its body. Let's open the lower back panel and insert the new plasma core. You aren't sure whether the plasma core quality will have any noticeable effects on the performance. This is one of the best ones we've found. Insert it. The process of installing the plasma core is the exact reverse of removing one. You place the core into the socket before locking it in place. However, Nothing noticeable happens. Let's troubleshoot. The miniature electronic city seems daunting at first, but you quickly find your bearings. After making sure the core has been installed correctly, you start following the power lines like you would a train route on a metro map. But the solution to the problem at hand does not require you to immerse yourself into the circuit's complexity, which you realize after finding the circuit breaker box. The burning out of the plasma core overloaded the breakers, causing them to close and interrupt the power to protect the rest of the circuit. They look like they should have reset themselves automatically, but you'd rather not delve into that. You reset them manually, and all the Electronic City's LED streetlights turn on. The power is on, and all systems appear to be functional. There is only one thing left to do in order to activate the statue, and that's to disable the standby switch located next to the plasma core. However, it might not be wise to do so until you determine whether you're activating a friend or a foe. Let's see this, this section. Open the back panel of the head. You see a flat circular casing the size of a hopper's head, made of super steel and containing what is most likely the statue's brain. Underneath it, you see eight connectors of various shapes and sizes, ordered in two rows of four, and having thin dust covers. Maybe you could try connecting one of those with a hacksaw. Let's try it. You wonder whether you could interface with such a different technology. Your hopes diminishing with each dust cover you open, finding underneath it more and more foreign shapes, until you reach the last one and instantly recognize it. You plug your hacksaw in. But this is where the real problems start, as you have trouble navigating through the many different systems of the machine's AI. After some digital roaming, you reach a system that appears to be dealing with object recognition. However, access is denied, and no matter what you try, the access still remains denied. So you disconnect your device in defeat. This is a problem you can't seem to overcome at the moment. If we try that again. Nope, okay, that's it. So we could probably have users help defend the island, but we do not have the hacking skill to do so. I, is there anyone who could possibly help? Marcus? Let's see if he has a conversation topic for us. He, he was the one who asked, actually asked us to find stuff to help out with the island, so maybe he can work with this? Nope! I'll see you later. Alright, well that sucks. Then I suppose you have to have some points in electronics and some points in hacking if you want to be able to access the Naga Protector. I am still waiting to put the final 40 points into something. But first, we'd have to level up and then drop, well, actually it's more like 30 points. And I don't think that would give us enough points to actually work with the statue anyway. So, it's a shame, but I don't see us actually being able to use it. Alright, Tim, where are we going now? Actually, hold on a second. Maybe we can call Marcus from here? I know it's a bit weird, but maybe we can use video game logic, which is we can't actually talk to Marcus, but we can maybe hail him on the radio? Um, let's select the channel. Marcus. 
Marcus here. Over. Garrett out. Nope. Nothing. Camp security? Wilson here. Over. What's your status? Over. Everything's in order. No hostiles in sight. Over. Garrett out. Darn it! Professor Oldfield? Oldfield on the line. Over. Garrett out. Ah, that sucks. Alright, so not possible for us to get help with that. That seems a bit weird to me. It would seem like Marcus would be absolutely the go-to guy for that. That sucks. And we used a power core, a decent quality one in it. Oh, well. Alright, so now we're, what are we doing? Let's try the Lumerian Health Center. I won. We've been told there's pirates all over the place there, though. Hold on a second. Before we do that, let's check our map. Where is I-1? J-5. K-7. So one's going to be... That's four. Three, so it's going to be over here. And up. Here. Well, that's not that far away from us, actually. I don't know if I'll survive the combat against them on jet skis. A part of me doesn't think I will. On jet skis. On, on our, on our um, patroller. I think we'll hold off on that at the moment. Let's uh, check these again. Let's check out the Joint Security Headquarters, then. F-12. That was savage territory, though, wasn't it? And 12's gonna be all the way this way. H, C, E, F, G, H. So all the way down here somewhere. Well, I'm not gonna get anywhere just standing here. Territory. Oh, that's awesome. We can see that there's a hole in the roof here. Hello. place we can fight if it comes down to it. The docking there is going to be a pain. If we're being chased.
can dock here. Most of it to reach him, but we'll do it. Nice! And we incapacitated him with that. Guards eliminated, and we can begin resupplying out all of the bolts that we need. Intestines. Ugh. We also don't need any of what we picked up. And we'll stay behind. We don't need all those nets. Really liking the music to this area as well. around here to assist them. found the facility we're looking for. There are traps here. I'm not gonna mess around with plasma mines. Our jackknife is definitely coming out while we're trying to disarm them. saw us. That was weird. Why am I entering combat here? Where is it? Oh, is it the cannons? No. It's the only thing that's becoming visible. I don't see anything. We're gonna move up. Oh! There's a turret! Wow!
So we're not sneaking past that. We can do the classic. Move, shoot, move. Oh, there's another one! <laughs> I got her almost dead. <laughs> Holy crap! <laughs> Let's heal ourselves. Oh, I forgot I picked up all these normal bolts. Yeah, this won't be that bad. It'll just take a while. So, I guess the good news is this means the savages were probably kept out. Oh, Tim, be careful. You will very easily die to that one. Sorry about this plasma turret. You're doing a good job guarding, though. There might be a third, since it didn't let me end combat instantly when that one was dead. Yep, heavily damaged, or worn. Let's go ahead and repair that. We'll search the rest of the grounds for more mines. I should've been wearing the proper goggles when I did that. That would've made it a little bit easier, Tim. Good thing we just didn't sail up here. We've been fired on by those. Not without a good place to hide either. At least one. can't see me here. That's good to know, so we can move here, shoot, and then move away. Sorry, turret, but it's you or me. We've been lucky that both hits 
haven't hit me from the same turret so far. Nice, good critical hit, Garrett. Nice! That's what I wanted to see. Still stealth on the off chance that there is more than just them around. There's another all the way down there. I won't have cover on this side. Wow, eight fusion batteries in that. That's very nice. Take these delicious, delicious plasma mines. Wow, good experience with the turrets. 659 as well. So something sees us here. I'm gonna really want to see where it's located. It can't see us here. There it is. Okay, again, this will, this will be no problem. Ooh, but it will take us a while. Really, game? I'm missing, I missed four, 74% of hires, really? In a row? There's five of them. It's just, it's just, this is annoying. Very annoying. Another torch is gone. Wow, that burnt out quick, that flare. Not wearing the goggles, Tim. If I misclick, that's going to be the end of Garrett, also. I don't think it'll miss twice at uh, at closer range. We missed three eighty-eight percent in a row. sledgehammer person. I guess you don't. Okay. Oof. Ooh. Oh, wow. Nice plasma core. Is that all of them? Yes.
Hello. Capacitive deionizer. It was once used to purify and desalinate water, it seems, but no longer works. Hello, trap. Oh, wow, how nasty. I would have docked there, gotten out, and immediately taken a huge hit. And it probably would have damaged our jet ski as well. Okay, let's store some stuff in our jet ski. Oh, actually, Jim, your jet ski is some t distance away. Okay, I'm not gonna need all these normal bolts. They can stay behind. Our food expired. Ah, all the batteries are weighing me down, I suppose. Something else is, too. Oh, the, the greater fusion cells. You'll be okay, Tim. Keep going. We can climb up there. We have the agility. dead person up here. Morphine? A 5mm hawker. That's garbage. Two canned meats and some canned stew. I guess he climbed up, maybe climbed up here to try to avoid the guns and got pinned and died of starvation. That sucks. Doesn't appear to be functional. Welcome to the Joint Security Headquarters. This facility is under lockdown. Minimum clearance level required to gain access is C4. Let's use Phil's severed arm. Authenticating. Welcome, P. Bridges. Authorizing. Clearance level C4 detected. Access granted. Opening gate. We know that's a Naga Protector. We know that can stand up. I hear electricity, so this place must still also be active. Please stand by for bioscanning. Dangerous substance detected. Please store your items into the ne nearby container and stand by for another bioscan. Dangerous substance detected. Please store your items into the nearby container and stand by for another bioscan.
it's still repeating it. No, still, still not it. Is it everything? I'm not going in naked. I'm not. I'm not sure what else it considers to be a dangerous substance. Really? What else could it be? I've got... I've got, like, nothing else on me. Fine. We're naked. That's it. Ah, okay. <laughs> Alright, one. we're gonna stop here. And I'll be back when I have looked up what on earth this thing wants me to do. So, I'll see you guys in the next one. Take care, everyone.